Welcome to Hamburgers and Horror, the home of meat, monsters, and magenta eels attacking you from the sky. I'm Noah Hook, and today we're looking at the 1986 Lovecraftian horror, From Beyond. From Beyond follows two doctors who create a machine that stimulates the pineal gland, with the side effect of connecting them to another dimension filled with all sorts of creatures. When the lead scientist is seemingly killed, the other doctor is forced to recreate their experiment to prove his innocence. What follows is a bright, fleshy funhouse of a movie. From Beyond is, of course, based on H.P. Lovecraft's short story, From Beyond. I go over its premise in my review of Banshee chapter, so maybe hop on over there if you're unfamiliar, but don't worry, it will get explained once I get into the plot. From Beyond was directed by Stuart Gordon, who was just coming off the success of Reanimator. Gordon probably has the largest portfolio of Lovecraftian films, with From Beyond being his second of five films he made based on Lovecraft's writings. Gordon had a background in theater and was used to working with the same group of people on multiple projects. Knowing From Beyond would require similarly odd requirements to Reanimator, Gordon cast Jeffrey Combs and Barbara Crampton in leading roles, as he already knew they were down for some crazy shit. And Reanimator screenwriter Dennis Paoli returned, as well as producer Brian Usna. It even has a score by Richard Band, and was distributed by Charles Band's company Empire. Those are all names I'm happy to see when I'm going into a horror movie. From Beyond was filmed in Italy to save money, and Gordon was also directing dolls on the same lot at the same time. The film had to be trimmed a lot to secure an R rating. The MPAA said that they were presented with a film that had about 10 times too much of everything, everything mostly meaning gore and SM. It had a budget of 4.5 million, but only made 1.3 million at the box office. But From Beyond did receive some pretty positive reviews, with Roger Ebert even saying that there was some satire and artistry amongst the slime. From Beyond has remained pretty beloved, with a 78 and 70 on Rotten Tomatoes. Before I jump in, I just wanted to thank my patron L.S. Gregor for requesting From Beyond for me to review. This was my first time watching it, and I was surprised at how much fun I had with it. With that, why don't we jump into the review? Better hide your dumplings and S&M gear, because we're watching From Beyond. The film opens on Dr. Crawford Tillinghast, played by Jeffrey Combs, tip-tapping on his computer and nomming on his pencil. Something is ready, and Crawford starts flipping switches and pushing buttons, which culminates with a lever being pulled on this machine called the Resonator. The prong starts glowing, some wind starts blowing, and an interdimensional flying eel appears. The eel is hangry and bites Crawford, but he's able to hold it back and flip the switch, turning the machine off and making the creature disappear. He rushes down to get the head doctor, Edward Pretorius, and tells him the resonator is working. Pretorius enables all of the prongs and turns that bad boy on. The pink glow is even more vibrant, and the boys start getting tingly in their brains, and Pretorius fucking loves it. The computers start going haywire, and Pretorius refuses to turn the resonator off, saying he wants to see more than any man has ever seen. He tells Crawford something is coming, and the windows start to shatter as this lady, played by Bunny Summers, calls the police on them. She is fed up with all those darn colors and noises, and her dog Bunny wriggles away and heads toward the house. She reluctantly heads inside to find Bunny, eventually making her way upstairs. She finds Bunny at the door to the lab and an axe going through the door. She and Crawford sprint out of the house just in time for the police to arrest him. The lady realizes she left Bunny, but don't worry lady, Bunny's just snacking on some severed head juice. A title card and a long-ass maggot-filled intro brings us to a psych ward where we meet Dr. Block, Sergeant Jordan Fields, and Dr. Catherine McMichaels. The two doctors are familiar with each other and have very different approaches to dealing with schizophrenic patients. Catherine has been brought in to determine the sanity of Crawford, who is being held in Block's facility. Catherine looks at the patients locked up in the facility, which absolutely had an influence on Chenard's hospital in Hellbound, and she meets Crawford. She asks Crawford about his relationship with Pretorius, and about their experiments. He says they were attempting to stimulate the pineal gland with resonant vibrations. Pretorius believed the pineal gland to be a dormant sensory organ, a sort of sixth sense, and their experiment proved he was right, but neither of them expected the creatures they encountered. Crawford says these creatures are around us all of the time, but we can only see them through the resonator's vibrations, and vice versa. He then says something horrible came out and had a snack. Bit off his head like a gingerbread man. Dr. Block hates gingerbread and calls security and separates them, but Catherine wants to do a CAT scan on him. They hook him up and the scan shows his pineal gland has extended towards the front of his brain. 
Block thinks it's a tumor, but Catherine believes the pineal gland itself is growing. She tells the sergeant that their experiment may have actually worked, and she wants to have Tillinghast recreate the experiment. The two doctors argue about the ethics of their methods, but the sergeant eventually sides with Catherine and allows her to take Crawford. He is not happy when he realizes she wants to bring him back to the Pretorius house, but it is a better option than being locked up forever. We meet their accompanying officer, Detective Bubba Brownlee, played by the always wonderful Ken Foray, and they return to the house. Crawford tries to escape, but those damn childproof locks stop him. He is utterly terrified to be back inside the house, but eventually joins them. Bubba trips over some cables, and Crawford says the whole house was rewired because the lab needed more power. Crawford runs off, and Bubba and Catherine head down to find the circuit breakers, which they do. Bubba and Catherine find Pretorius's red room, which is filled to the brim with BDSM equipment and even some of Pretorius's own films. They head up to the lab and find the resonator, and Crawford bursts from the shadows and almost nails Catherine with an axe, but he is just reliving the actions from the night Pretorius died, pointing out the tuning fork he broke off the machine. He stares at the outlines of headless Pretorius and refuses to sleep until he finishes fixing the machine. Meanwhile, Bubba is hungry and makes some delicious looking dumplings. I don't know if I was really hungry the first time I watched this, but I made an audible sound at how good they looked. Crawford stares at the sleeping Catherine, and he and Bubba discuss her beauty, which leads to Crawford remembering how Pretorius liked to treat beautiful women. Bubba calls Pretorius crazy, but Crawford says he was a genius, but the five senses just weren't enough for him. Catherine wakes up, and it's time to resonate. He explains how the machine works, placing a lot of emphasis on the on and off switch. Catherine is pumped to get started, but Crawford tells her not to move once the vibrations start, or the creatures will notice her. He flips the switch and the resonator does its thing, vibrating their brains real nice. Crawford and Catherine even share a romantic moment before Bubba spots an eel and some jellyfish. Bubba tries to touch one and it attacks him, biting a chunk out of his arm. More glass shatters and Crawford tells them it's coming. He goes to shut off the machine when a familiar voice calls his name. Pretorius emerges from the shadows to greet his assistant and takes a quick interest in Catherine. Pretorius tells Crawford he didn't die, he simply passed beyond, and the gruesome process was just a rite of passage. Crawford can't believe it's him, and Pretorius offers to let him touch his body. Crawford's gentle touch smushes into Pretorius's flesh, and he laughs as he peels his face off. He says bodies change, but now his mind is indivisible as he performs a few horrible transformations. Bubba fires some shots, but to no avail. Pretorius lunges at them, but Crawford is able to turn off the machine in time. Everyone is shaken up, except Catherine, who is fascinated by Pretorius's ability to control his body like that, and she says many lives will be saved thanks to his discovery. She feasts on some eggs while she wonders if people with schizophrenia might have a slightly awakened pineal gland, which is what causes their visions. Bubba asks why he got a heart on during the experiment, and Catherine explains that the pineal gland helps regulate sexual arousal, so stimulating the pineal might make you horny. Bubba is just glad they can get out of there now, but Catherine wants to conduct the experiment again. Bubba and Crawford are both adamantly against the idea, but Catherine just has to learn more. Crawford agrees, but not here and now, it needs to be in a controlled environment, but Catherine says it is a controlled environment and that this machine may be the key to curing schizophrenia. She tells Crawford her father was diagnosed with it and eventually died in an institution after a lifetime of drugs, surgeries, and electroshock treatments. This is what stemmed her hate for locking up schizophrenics and she wants to prevent that fate from happening to anyone else. But Crawford refuses to help her and Bubba agrees they won't be touching the resonator. They decide to get some sleep before heading out, but restless Catherine can't sleep with sweet resonator dreams. She heads upstairs and caresses the machine before turning it on. Crawford wakes up with a pulsating pineal and runs upstairs. He tells Catherine to turn it off, but she refuses and grabs him for a smooch. This plan works for a bit, but Crawford returns to his senses just in time for Pretorius to arrive, and he's looking better than ever. Pretorius uses his stretchy arm to grab Catherine. And instead of just turning the machine off, Crawford tries to draw the humanity out of Pretorius. Pretorius says he is more than human though, and that everyone must join him. Crawford runs away only to be tackled by a speedo-clad Bubba down a flight of stairs. He tells Bubba he has to hit the circuit breakers and keeps going. Pretorius begins to sexually assault Catherine using all of the senses, and touch looks particularly awful. Bubba joins Crawford in the basement, but they are greeted by this big-ass lamprey monster. 
Bubba runs upstairs and grabs a kitchen knife and jumps on the creature as Crawford goes for the breakers. Catherine asks what Pretorius plans to do and he says he is going to kiss her. His head gives birth to another more monstrous one and he proceeds to eat her head. The lamprey is now eating Crawford with Bubba trying to pull him out but he gets tossed aside. He sees the cables leading to the breakers and pulls them, finally turning off the power and getting rid of the creatures. The digestive system of the lamprey has left Crawford without any hair and a few pretty bad burns, and Catherine is left with some severe trauma as she frantically unplugs the resonator as much as she can. Catherine apologizes to Crawford and says she shouldn't have turned on the resonator with others present. Now she says only one person should be around to run the experiment. Catherine begins to falsely say she can control herself when the resonator is on, and Bubba compares her to a junkie looking for a fix. She somehow thinks Bubba is just going to take Crawford and leave her there, but he goes to pack the van for all three of them. He tells her to get dressed unless she wants to travel in a torn nightgown. It doesn't take long for her insatiable pineal gland to get excited, and she starts playing around with Pretorius' sex stuff. She even stumbles into some new clothes. Catherine-like. Catherine-like a lot. Catherine also likes unconscious, severely burnt men and starts jerking off Crawford, but tasting his duck butter isn't enough and she hops on top of him, but thankfully Bubba walks in. He tells her the van is ready and the cords in the basement jolt to life and reconnect to the breakers. She tries to seduce Bubba, but Bubba is stronger willed than she is and forces Catherine to look at herself, which upsets her. Even more upsetting is the fact that Pretorius has turned the resonator back on from beyond. Bubba tries to turn it off, but he continuously gets zapped for his efforts. The magnets even steal his gun. Catherine and Crawford run up, but they are attacked by a bunch of tiny meat-eating creatures, kind of like bees. Bubba tries to pull the cables, but the resonator has welded the plugs to the machine. He chops the cables with the axe, but they keep carrying their electric current through it. Bubba tries to lure the bug monsters away with his flashlight, which seems to work, but when he tosses it, the resonator points it right back at him. The creatures swarm and devour Bubba way faster than they were the other two, and he is quickly eaten down to the bone. Holy shit, how have I never seen this before? R.I.P. Bubba. But the awesome effects aren't done yet, cause here's Pretorius! Kiss. Kiss, my dear. Catherine tries to grab a fire extinguisher, but a Pretorius tentacle grabs her. He says he and Catherine are going to explore each other's minds, and that it's the greatest pleasure one can feel. Crawford tells the monster he knows nothing of pleasure and has only ever given pain to others, but then his pineal gland starts acting up and Pretorius says he is evolving. Crawford tries to fight it but fails, and his pineal breaks through his skull and out of his forehead, just like Pretorius's. We see the ridiculous, beautiful vision the pineal gland allows, and Pretorius starts dragging Catherine towards him, but she manages to grab the extinguisher and spray the resonator, which is enough to cut it off. She checks on Crawford, but the resonator cuts back on, and so does Pretorius. She gives it a real good spray this time, which keeps the machine off. For some reason, they are back at the psychiatric hospital, as opposed to a regular hospital, and Block is not a fan of Crawford's pineal gland. The police arrive and obviously don't believe Catherine, and Block tells them she is as schizophrenic as Crawford. She tries to warn the sergeant, but he blames her for Bubba's death and puts her under Block's control. I have no idea if it was this easy to condemn someone as insane and lock them up, but given it's the 80s, I'll assume so. Block is excited to treat Catherine like absolute garbage, and has a reluctant nurse prepare her for electroshock therapy. Catherine makes a run for it, but that goes about as well as expected, and she is strapped down and gagged. Meanwhile, Crawford has woken up and sneaks out of his room. He tries to eat some food, but it tastes no good to him. His pineal gland leads him to a yummier snack, medical remains. Block finds that Crawford is missing and notices a bloody puddle coming from the pathology lab. She politely asks him not to eat the brain, and it's only then that he realizes what he is doing. She leads him out, but his pineal is still hungry and has spotted a yummy new brain to munch on. He blocks the door and sucks her brain out of her fucking eye socket? The doctor prepares to shock her, but the news of a slurped doctor spreads quickly and her electrocution has to be postponed. When her arm gets unstrapped, she smacks the doctor in the head with a light and makes another run for it. Crawford makes it outside just in time to see Catherine escape in a police van. He's also just in time for an ambulance to pull in. The EMTs pull out an elderly man going through alcohol withdrawal, and Crawford's pineal is hungry again. 
The lady EMT doesn't believe a snake man attacked her co-worker. That is until she sees he's been slurped. He starts slurping her too, but she is able to stab him with a pocket knife, but he ultimately smashes her face into the concrete. Mr. Pineal goes back inside and the terrified Crawford gets the fuck out of there in the ambulance. Catherine pulls up to the house and heads inside where she finds another comedic chalk outline. She pulls out an explosive device and lots of dynamite, which I guess was in the van she stole. She sets the timer for 5 minutes and those damn breakers start acting up. She heads down but is ambushed by Crawford who restrains her in Pretorius's straps. He tells Catherine he loves her and wants to be with her forever. She tells him about the bomb but he says it doesn't matter and goes full pineal mode. He starts slurping but Catherine fights back and bites off his pineal gland. Ugh. Meanwhile the resonator has once again activated. Things get pink again and Crawford regains consciousness just in time for our favorite fleshy boy to return. Crawford tries to stop Pretorius this time by warning him that Catherine will be disappointed in his inability to make love. Pretorius thinks Crawford might be able to give him a couple tips and chases him downstairs. This body's a little too slow, so Pretorius sprouts some wings and that weird pincer face and smacks Crawford real good and actually twists his head off. The eels enter the sex dungeon and Catherine wriggles her chains so they bite through her straps. She slowly pulls out some matches and lights them up to distract the eels and runs downstairs. Here she finds Crawford's headless remains and is greeted by Pretorius. She runs back upstairs with Pretorius hot on her trail, and now the upstairs is flooding I guess. There are only 30 seconds left on the bomb and Pretorius grabs her. He is laughing maniacally when a hand starts coming out of his mouth, revealing Crawford also has agency over the body now. He tears through and tells her to run, but Pretorius sucks him back inside. But Crawford isn't done yet, and the two begin tearing each other apart within the same body, creating a big, fleshy, skeletal, beautiful mess. Catherine gets away and jumps out of the window at the very last second, and the house goes up in flames. Catherine's knee is all sorts of fucked up and she is found by the nosy neighbors who have gathered outside. Bunny's mom tells her the fire department will be here soon and she asks what happened, but all the stuttering, terrified Catherine can get out is... <coughs> the creeped out lady backs away as Catherine goes between screaming, crying, and laughing maniacally to end the movie. And that's From Beyond! This is the most fun I've had watching a new movie for the channel so far. It has great grotesque creature effects, well-developed characters with solid driving forces for their decisions, a great cinematography and score, and it manages to be funny and scary. It's also a very fast-paced movie, it's constantly moving from plot point to plot point so it doesn't feel like it's wasting time, but it also doesn't sacrifice characterization and exposition. The information the viewer needs is explained, but we aren't spoon-fed all the additional stuff we don't really need. For example, we just meet Bubba and keep going, there isn't some exposition dump explaining that an officer will be joining them, we just gather that information on our own. I know that's a small detail, but I feel like it's something a lot of movies are afraid to do. The visual effects are a lot of fun, the pink is so vibrant it almost gives the lab scenes a giallo feel. And the funky way they did the eel and jellyfish effects screams low budget, but also creates a very unique image. I don't think I've seen anything quite like it. There are a few points where the practical effects look a little shoddy, but generally they are a feast for the eyes. If I had to describe them, I would say it's like Reanimator meets The Thing, which is a wonderful combination. Absolutely fantastic work by John Carl Buechler. Every actor and actress did a great job, and I appreciate their willingness to go the extra weird mile this movie required. Barbara Crampton got to take Catherine so many different places throughout the movie, it is a really impressive performance. The plot is pretty thin, and a few of the next steps from scenes don't necessarily make sense, but that kind of lines up with a movie as absurd as this one. And there's also a lot of metaphors and subtext within the film, which I wasn't expecting going in. Catherine's experiences with the Resonator certainly mimic cycles of addiction, remorse, and relapse, and the pineal gland flopping around is a funny way to bring Pretorius's impotence to life. And of course, there is the exploration of mental illness. I'm usually not interested when movies try to explore schizophrenia or make it supernatural or make schizophrenic people out to be monsters. But From Beyond is pretty much able to avoid those missteps by having the story revolve around the people who are supposedly trying to solve it, and exploring the flaws in their own methods. I also appreciate any movie that doesn't have a happy ending, and From Beyond certainly doesn't. 
All in all, From Beyond is a really smart, fun, and scary movie. It knows how to get sadistic, gory, and sexy. This might just be recency bias, but I might like this even more than Reanimator, so I highly recommend you go give it a watch. It is definitely an unappreciated work by Stuart Gordon, who sadly passed away in March of 2020. He had such a unique, distinctive way of making movies, he will truly be missed by the horror community. Right now From Beyond is free to watch on Tubi, so definitely head on over and give it some love. Well that's about it, thank you so much for joining me, and an additional thank you to my patrons for helping me keep the channel going. Next week we'll be continuing our journey through the Chucky saga with 2013's Curse of Chucky. As always, I'm Noah Hook, and thanks for watching Hamburgers and Horror. Stay safe out there. Thanks for watching my review of From Beyond. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe so you can keep up with all of my horror reviews. And if you want to help support the channel further, you should check out my Patreon account. You'll get to personally request movies for me to review, as well as vote in polls to decide future franchises I cover. Thanks, y'all.